right, good morning. I wanted to show you and talk you through the purchase of my very first Corvette. Uh, and uh, to talk you about, talk you through what I know about it. It, it gets kind of confusing because there's this, there's a, a lot of numbers. So this is a Carbon 65 Edition C7 Z06 3LZ package with uh, the Z07 Performance package. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of things to, to keep straight. But the thing I like most about Carbon 65 is the, uh, the color, the Ceramics Matrix Gray, which again, this is my first Corvette, so Corvette owners take it easy on me. I, I have to kind of learn the process and learn uh, you know, all of the different, uh, different numbers and names and features and things like that. But I, I've been I've been digging for a while, uh, for probably three months or so, but not to the extent like you know, I've owned BMWs for, for a decade plus, so, uh, and Porsche for six years now. So I have a lot more time, uh, time to, to figure out some of the nomenclature and things like that. But I wanna take you through the car, uh, talk to you about some of the things that I've noticed. I just got it, not yesterday, but the day before at like 9 p.m. So I've really only had it for about 24 hours. Uh, and I've driven it uh, a few a few miles, maybe, maybe 60, 70 miles, something like that. Uh, but I'm enjoying it thus far. And uh, I'm gonna keep an open mind uh, because this, you know, I, I have opinions about Corvettes. So I wanna fully immerse myself into the car and the culture and I wanna be sure that you know, I get the proper experience and I really learn about it and, and, uh, and especially from the aftermarket perspective, which I'm not too excited about. Just digging online, there, there, there aren't the resources, the Corvette Forum, the, uh, the different vendors that just don't seem to put in the same effort uh, that I'm accustomed to that the Porsche and BMW and uh, even, shoot, even the GT350 community. I've owned a G GT350 in the past. So let's, uh, let's walk around the car, kind of show you what's, what's going on here. Uh, what I have, uh, what I have learned, what my observations have been, and then I'll be sure to be doing more driving and things like that of the car, and uh, of course, be doing lots of modification. Also, doing uh, full uh, my full detail. If you, again, if you guys are new to to me and Corvettes, uh, or if you're from the Corvette community and you're new to, to Obsessed Garage, uh, I guess my roots are in uh, in obsessing over anything to do with the garage, and you know, detailing is a big big part of that. So let's let's walk, take a walk around the car and uh, kind of dig into some of the things I'm thinking about and some of the things I've, I've observed. I don't, I don't know why I have a darn jacket. This is so hot. I don't know what I was thinking there. So anyway, ceramics, ceramic matrix gray, I think is pretty sick. Um, this car must have been completely wrapped in paint protection film, PPF, and they must have removed it. It's weird because they didn't remove it off the passenger's door, the top and, and trunk of the car or the rear fender. There aren't any rock chips. It doesn't appear to have been repainted. It's hard to tell on a Corvette because the paint is kind of janky in comparison to you know, what I'm used to. Uh, but uh, the, the, the cool thing about the Carbon 65 edition is this is carbon. I know you can get a, a, an optional rooftop carbon, uh, but that's carbon. And then uh, we have the, uh, the, it comes with a carbon, uh, whatever the, uh, whatever these little cooling ducts are. Uh, I'm not sure, do these, are these actual? Do these do any, anything performance wise? I'm not sure, considering the engine is in the front. But I like the way this, this particular edition looks. Uh, things that I'm thinking about doing um, outside of, uh, I'll paint correct it. I, I don't know if I'll wrap it. Um, I may, uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll talk to my friend Billy at Presidential and Ryan, uh, Ryan Burroughs at uh, Auto Paint Guard. So we'll talk to him about uh, maybe doing the car and wrapping it full. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna be driving it around town. It depends on if I take it to the mountains or not. Uh, so we'll see. Um, another thing, another option that's part of the carbon ceramic package, I'm sorry, the carbon 65 package are carbon ceramics. Uh, no, I take that back. That's part of the Z07 package. What is part of the carbon 65 package is the um, or addition or the blue calipers. And then the machine lip, you can see the guy hit some curbs. So that's 
not a good sign on how this car has been cared for. Uh, it does have 21,000 miles on it, so I'm not sure of the story. But once I figured out, once I learned about the Carbon 65 edition, I, I had to have this. This was the car that I wanted. And it's supposed to have Cup 2 tires on it, but it has a uh, Pilot all season, which is ridiculous. So uh, I already ordered Voss in, uh, I think they're v, VS21s. Uh, so I'll have those in six weeks or so. That'll give me some time to get start, start, start figuring out the car and figuring out what other modifications I'm going to do. Uh, the carbon ceramics look a little odd, too. I don't know if this car has been tracked, but I've never seen pitting like that on the rotors. So these look pretty abused. Luckily, I think these are only 1500 or so, maybe $2,000. I don't, I don't think they're quite $2,000 uh, a wheel uh, or, a, or a side or a corner. So if I had to replace, I'm not, I'm not too, too worried about, about that. Unlike the GT3, my GT3 rotors are like four or 4,400 a piece, something like that. So right now they seem okay. They do squeak a bit, uh, but these wheels, I mean, again, they're curbed and the offsets aren't great. And then this wheel gap is just ridiculous. I don't know how Corvette guys deal with that. Wheel gap is insane. Uh, so I'm likely going to be doing, I talked to DSC, uh, and we're talking about doing the RT package. What I haven't figured out, this goes and holds true for everything with Corvettes, like, give me some freaking information. So I'm hoping to add value in that there are no videos on coilover conversions, like, all, I, all there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos of you taking the wheel bolts out, which I'm not going to do, that just seems janky to me. So. I'd like to get rid of the leaf springs, coilover conversion, probably delete the uh, Magna Ride option uh, and, uh, and go with a more sophisticated suspension with ride height adjustment so I can get rid of this massive gap. Uh, to me, this front end isn't all that low. I mean, my GT3 is way lower than this. So people talking about rubbing the front lip and stuff, I'm not worried about that at all. I, you know, I kind of know how to drive. And plus I live in Florida, that's helpful. I don't have giant curbs. Uh, but yeah, these, these are all seasons, which is really odd to put on a Corvette and they appear to be basically new, uh, but I think the alignment's off or else these have been taken to the track. So I don't know what's going on with this car, but I'm actually kind of excited that I have some opportunity to make some improvements and clean it up. If I would have gotten a car with 3000 miles on it, I wouldn't have been able to work my magic on it. PPF is not good at all, so I'll be I'll be removing this PPF. I mean, why wouldn't you? Why would you cut it off here and not wrap it? So this was clearly done by a dealership grade, dealership level, you know, PPF type type company. You know, it's just really really goofy. And so I, I don't think anything's been repainted on the car. Again, I, I bought it sight on scene from a dealer. My friend Dave went and looked at it. He said. You know, there may or may not have been some paint done to the car. We checked all the, he checked all the areas, has a lot of experience with that. Uh, and I, it's hard to tell because Chevy kind of has kind of chintzy quality control and that kind of stuff. So uh, I don't, I don't know what to expect there. I haven't even opened this up yet. Well, one of my normal modifications is to cut off the, uh, the little string, but yeah. And you can always tell people that just don't know how to care for things like he clearly smacked this a couple of times and you know just doesn't doesn't take care that that i would and that's most people so uh, a couple of things that are just ridiculous there are gosh darn stupid checkered flags everywhere that's going to be the hard part for me uh, i, I want to take this seriously i don't want to make snap judgments uh this thing is an amazing car for what it costs. I paid 75,000 bucks for this thing. I think it had a 115, $118,000 sticker. Uh, so, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to try to enjoy the experience and not nitpick things, but I'm going to observe and I'm going to share and then I'll, I'll reserve judgment for when I'm, you know, done with this car, when I move on to the next thing and who knows, maybe I'll love it, and keep it forever. I suspect that's probably not going to happen mainly just because of the seating position, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, let's open up the rear here. So another thing of the carbon 65 is I think whatever this goofy glass thing is. Um, so I guess that's so you can see out the rear. Uh, it would be nice if they would have done like a carbon splitter and carbon surrounds instead they do this kind of sparkly blackish looking weird crap. So I'll probably replace that stuff. You know, these, I don't know if they're supposed to look kind of 
kind of washed out looking, but I don't know. I'd probably prefer if those were red, but uh, I'm going to be doing, I'm planning to do an AWE rear section. I have to decide whether I'm doing touring or the full on, uh, whatever they call the track version. And then I have to figure out what headers do I do LG Motorsports, Cooks, American Racing headers. And if I do one and one in, what are they? One and seven eighths or do I do two inch? I mean, what, what size do we do? I'm not sure about, um, so here's the, the rear area with this weird smock. So let's get rid of that. Of course, has weather tech. I wonder if he has, I've been meaning to check, do they have the actual floor mat underneath? No, but I'm gonna be ditching this thing for sure. Once I get into the interior and clean it and figure out, I'm actually surprised. I mean, there's a ton of room, you know, a lot more room than I'm accustomed to, certainly more room than my GT3 uh, to store stuff in this car. Uh, but, you know, I almost wish they designed the seating position a little differently and who cares if you can fit a golf bag or not, but there's all kinds of weird nets and that's such an American car thing that I don't give a crap about any of that. In fact, let me get this out of here right now. What the heck is the point of that stupid thing? Is it to hide your groceries? I don't know. Maybe it's to keep your groceries from flying into the front. I'm not really sure. The one thing I do like, oh yeah, what the heck is all this crap? Anyway, I'll, I'll mess with that later. And I gotta get the windows tinted. Uh, I don't want too many people knowing that I'm driving this. <laughs> Just kidding. The other the thing that I do like is this, that it does have its own latch. So it is soft close. I kept slamming the thing, but I can't believe they put checkers in the darn dot matrix. That's just ridiculous. I haven't washed the car yet. So I'll be doing a first wash video coming up here. Uh, one thing I'm considering about doing is getting rid of these. It'd be such a big project just for that. So I would have to go and have the indentations filled and have the bumpers repainted, but I'll definitely be taking the Corvette emblem off. That's for sure. Got to get a plate. Um, so this is what's a little bit odd is that this has PPF, this has PPF, this and this have PPF. This door has PPF, so I haven't been able to take off the Carbon 65 sticker because it's underneath there. Uh, but, you know, I'll be taking all that off because it's just not good. Not, not good. And then the question is whether I redo it. I think all of this, nope, no PPF there. So, you know, I mean, think this would be the thing you'd want to add PPF to. And then I wonder if, I'm sure somebody probably makes this in carbon fiber as well. So I'd like to do carbon on all the little, the little sparkly black accent pieces. So we'll, we'll figure that out. But uh, I'm excited about wheels. I've never done Voss and wheels before, but better offsets, same factory tire size. What are they, 265, 335s or 325, something like that. So I'll be uh, sticking, with, sticking with OE. OE version, and I think you can get carbon. Some companies make carbon here as well. So inside, um, of course, we have freaking WeatherTech floor mats. It's junk. So I'll get rid of those. I guess WeatherTech would be fine if you're in the north, but all season tires, WeatherTech floor mats for a car that came out of Atlanta just doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, that's just such a such a goofy American thing to do. Um, let me get this trophy out of here so I don't have that in the way. Um, the, the thing I like most about the Carbon 65 version, other than the color, is the interior does add some blue stitching. Uh, and then I know you can get some Alcantara inserts on, on, the, um, on the various, whatever, all the different versions of how you can build these cars with all the different packages. Uh, I don't know why the package numbers frustrate me because every other company has lots of numbers. It's just that I don't, I don't know them. Uh, but the interior is surprisingly decent. Um, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It is a hundred plus thousand dollar car, uh, but there's uh, blue stitching up here. I don't know if you can get that, Bryce, but there's uh, blue stitching up in the, uh, in the headliner, which is kind of, kind of neat. It's a little out of place and that that's a little fancy for, for the interior of this car. Um, but I'm going to have to replace a few parts in here. Some of the Alcantara is probably toast. Uh, people a lot of times use the wrong products to clean Alcantara. I can kind of feel it. You know, there's something in here that they use that just isn't smart. 
So somebody, probably the same guys that did the janky uh, PPF, um, doing just pattern cuts and you know kind of crappy edge detail. Um, I mean, why would you cut this edge short? <laughs> Only if you're using a template. Why wouldn't you come out over the edge? Um, just seems to make sense to me, but. I'm beginning floor mats, probably new shift knob, uh, and uh, I gotta get this warning label, which looks right on the end of my face. So let me jump in the front seat here and I'll talk to you a little bit about. So the front seat is so tricky for me in this car. You know, I'm 6'2", 235, and um, I just can't get it. like, I mean, look at where my head is. I've got literally an inch of space. The seat is all the way down. What I could do is do like, I guess I could do one of these deals, and rock it all the way back. I hate drive. Why would you want to drive like that? I want to drive straight up and in control. So I move it back, up. I like the steering wheel all the way out, you know, generally out. And I like the steering wheel generally to be as low as possible and still see the gauge cluster. Uh, and uh, another thing that's really odd is, I mean, this car is 20,000 miles on it, and this is totally matted, so I don't know if I'll be able to bring this back, uh, but they probably, part of it's hands, but there's no way anybody's hands are that dirty, and that amount of time is completely ruined. So I found a um, new steering wheel, but I'm going to figure out the blue stitching part. Uh, same thing with the shift knob, it's just matted and basically destroyed. So I'm gonna to try to bring, restore it. I'll make a video of that to see if I can bring it back. Same thing with the armrest here. Uh, but the, the interior is not a bad place to be other than, I mean, this, and, and I don't wanna complain, but um, this is probably the worst seat I've ever sat in my life. It's just like, I don't understand, you know, I'm, I'm not, I mean, most of my weight, I should probably be 205, but all of my weight's here, it's not in my hips. My waist is, you know, 36, 37, whether I'm 205 or two, you know, 250. Uh, and I'm literally floating. Like these bolsters are just ridiculous. Like I'm, I'm literally sitting on the bolsters. It doesn't make any sense at all. So I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming these are Recaros, but does Chevy go to Recaro and say, look, we need you to take the seats that you already make and make them crappy. Like, make them crappier than anything you've ever made before. I want your cheapest, crappiest seat. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So the hardest part for me to deal with in this car is seating position. I'm literally, I have to look down past the headliner to see. Uh, instead of being able to lower the seat down so I can sit with my, you know, head in a normal position. Uh, and, yeah, Alcantara needs some serious help. There's something really sticky so the dealership or the owner just doesn't know what the heck's going on. So we're going to have to have to fix that. Um, if we look at some of the things I think is really cool, well, this beep is never going to go away. Let me just do this. Let's just start it up. That's the coolest part about this thing. It's just awesome. So uh, the gauge cluster is amazing. And I'll, I'll talk more about that you know, as we go on. Uh, this is a little goofy, you know, the Apple CarPlay. It's also weird that you have a, uh, a Glock holster. I can put all my, my cocaine and, uh, and uh, put my little mini Glock in there, I guess. I don't know, in case someone wants to roll up on me and steal my, my vet. That's one thing you'll never hear me say on this channel. That's the one and last time you'll hear, let, hear me say that word. We'll call it a Corvette, uh, not a vet. That's number two, and that's it. Done with that. Uh, but the gauge cluster is really sweet. Um, you go to track and touring mode. It has a different gauge setup. So as you scroll through the modes, I think that's pretty sweet. I wish you know. I wish Porsche had a center gauge, and I wish they just did away with these stupid. It reminds me of my Chevy Beretta. You know, the, 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 maybe they still have to have that, but this would be amazing if they just went to pure digital. I don't know, I think the C8 is all, all digital. This has heads-up display as well. Uh, the good news is I've been able to get the heads-up display so it's not cut off, because, you know, I'm, can I, what do you do? If you're 6'7", you can't own one of these cars. I mean, if you're 6'5", your head is literally touching the ceiling. I mean, I thought these were made for big, fat, dumb Americans. I mean, why wouldn't we have a car that you could actually fit in? just doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense but 
Uh, anyway, this is carbon number 171 of 650. They made 500 for the U.S., 150 uh, internationally. But uh, we're going to do a lot of work with the exhaust. Sounds amazing stock. I don't want to rev on it because it's not warmed up, but... Yeah, the car sounds really amazing for, for what it is. I think... Is it valve? It does sound different, so if I go touring... No, it sounds the same either way. So I plan to do, I plan to do likely um, cam. I have, cam oh, I have a tendency to want to say cams. So cam, headers, mid pipe, rear section, coilover, uh, coilover conversion, um, DSC controller, uh, tint the windows, fix the interior, uh, dial in the exterior, the paint condition. Um, do some carbon fiber upgrades, um, new wheels, uh, probably go to cup two tires, address the, uh, the issues, see if there's any issues with the carbon ceramics, um, change all the fluids, the oil, the diff, uh, probably do, you know, camber arms and some other uh, suspension components, maybe solid, um, solid differential mounts. Um, you know, I got to replace some, you know, some, car, some of these plastic pieces, get new floor mats. Um, but the, like the pedals look nice, and uh, so just the typical stuff to change that um, you know I would normally do to a car. Only I have to figure out you know brands and sites, and it's just man, everything about this community is so different than what I'm accustomed to. Uh, so I'll reserve judgment until I am done with the car. But my whole thesis here, the whole reason to do this was I wanted to buy the car to experience it. And then I then I can have all the opinions opinions I want, you know, because uh, it's not an opinion; it's an experience. You know, if I owned the car, had the car, drove the car, modified the car, you know, uh, then I can, you know, then I'll have, you know, I'll have an experience. And who knows? Maybe I'll love it and keep it, and uh, and and have, you know, probably won't keep this one, but I would keep a maybe I'll keep a Z06 in my life or a ZR1 in my life for an extended period of time. It's. It's hard though. I drove this all day yesterday and I drove my GT3 RS today and there's just no question. There's no contest. I mean, I know this is faster in a straight line, but you know, and even maybe even around a track depending on how you drive, but I don't give a crap about any of that. I care about the experience. The driving experience is, is most important. So I'll have some, some more uh, uh, input on that. Let's go out front, uh, let's pop the hood. I haven't even looked under the hood yet. Let's look under there and we'll, we'll kind of wrap this video up. This is going to be hard to get used to. Why do, the, why do this reverse? It's ridiculous. Why not open it forward? It'd be so much more useful. And you have to take the darn hood off. Oh, yeah. More freaking flags everywhere. But this, you know, obviously is the cool part about this thing. Despite the fact that, you know, the MPG on this is 11 miles per gallon. Yeah, this appears to be all stock. I don't think there, there are no upgrades or down, downgrades in some cases. Um, but I'll be doing likely cam. Uh, the, the, the interesting thing on this car for me is that I'm just not sure how much horsepower I would want, you know? So I've never had this decision to make, like, do you make 900, you could make 900 horsepower pretty easily, you know, with the budget that I have for this, I'm going to make probably a thousand. And, uh, I just, I don't think I want that. You know, I think I'd rather have a more reasonable amount of output. So, again, I'll probably just do bolt-on stuff and some, like, a mild cam just for the experience of it. But I don't think I'm going to do, like, a bigger, a larger displacement supercharger. I don't think I'm going to do, I mean, maybe I'll do a, a, a different pulley. I guess it'd be a smaller pulley, right? Smaller pulley to make it spin faster, make a little more horsepower. Um, so I'll probably do somewhere in the, you know, make this car in the high sevens, maybe low eights, something like that, 800 horsepower range and call it a day. I mean, I, I could probably be happy with it as is and just do an exhaust and headers and intake and make, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 horsepower more and, uh, and call it quits. But you know, this, this platform is so interesting to me where, you know, Porsche, BMW, you really can't squeeze anything else out of them. This being factory supercharged is so easy to make power and there's such huge support for that. It's just the thing that's a little hard to adjust to is the support 
It's just not what I'm accustomed to where you have people that build great websites and have great forums and have lots of people that are sharing you know, quality information. I'm sure there are great tuners for these cars, probably way more than for Porsche BMW, but the, the quality of information is just not, not the same. Uh, I th I'm going to figure, I think Haltech makes a carbon fiber um, uh, intake, so I'll probably do that. Uh, but it's going to be fun to do a, I'm not, this isn't going to be a budget build for me. This is going to be a, you know, a higher end and I'm going to share my learning process, what I like and don't like as we go through this. So let's wrap this up and uh, I'll reserve some more judgment for when I actually drive the thing. So that's the, that's the scoop on uh, my C7 Z06. Uh, I like the fact that you know, the, the Carbon 65 edition just made sense to me. I like the interior and I like the color. Uh, it's probably not smart. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna modify this one to my spec, but nothing that won't be reversible. It will be bolt on except for maybe getting rid of this and filling that. I, I don't know that I'll go to that extreme. I don't, I don't know that I hate the badges that quite that much, but uh, we're going to be doing a full-on paint corrections detailing series. I've never, I've never done a full, you know, Corvette before, uh, so it'll be interesting to, to deal with the, the paint and 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 to uh, coat it and protect it, uh, and wash it and maintain it over the next year or so. My plan is with this car, I'm probably going to do another giveaway like I did with my BMW 1M. Go back and watch those videos if you're if you're new here. Uh, but I think that. I think that both, uh, I'll probably turn off some of you Corvette owners, I'm, I'm sure I will, because um, I'm going to give you my take, you know, being a BMW, Porsche, Honda, you know, Audi owner, um, and uh, for, for many, many years, I'm, I'm 39 years old, so I've had some car experience, I've driven lots of cars, um, so I'll, I'll be giving you my input, my take, uh, and uh, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but I'm going to reserve judgment uh, and reserve some of my more snide comments and, uh, and stay under control on this uh, as I go through the process. Because same thing would happen with my BMW when I'm modifying things and I'm angry that stuff doesn't fit right. When you start modifying, it never works as planned. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my time and think through. Uh, like I said, if you are new here, this isn't a entertainment channel. This is a I'm gonna talk a lot. I'm gonna give you as much detail as I you know as I see fit. Uh, I'm gonna give people the information, all the in between stuff. We don't edit it down. We don't add music. We don't add transitions. Uh, so I'm gonna stick to the style of um, grown up talk on a you know a grown up car. Uh, and then I'll give you my thoughts on the end. So the idea here is that I'll probably do a, a raffle type giveaway type type uh, thing come next summer. It's going to take me a while to experience the car and own it and modify it and, and figure out what's what. So anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for watching and um, uh, stay tuned for lots of updates on the on the Z06. Next video will probably be a driving video uh, and then just drive around the block and give you some initial impressions. Uh, and then from there, we'll do a first uh, wash and chat. And then after I'm done with my, I have an F10 M5 that I'm modifying and paint correcting and doing it's on my lift at my garage now. Um, so that car I'm working through um, getting that car set up to my spec. Uh, and once that's done, then I'll get it in the garage and get it on the lift and start start detailing it. So it'll be a full paint correction protection series and then I'll start modifying the car as well as I learn things. So I'll be sure to share that with you uh, better than anything I've seen on Corvettes online. There's just very little information on doing higher end stuff on these cars. Everything's about doing cheap and inexpensive, which doesn't make sense because it's a hundred and whatever plus thousand dollar car. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for uh, more Corvette content. And I always say this as always, stay tuned for more crazy. Lots more coming on this car. Thanks for watching. The heck, how do I open the hood? My OB2. Oh, ah, all the way, yep. All of you there's like no. Why do we have a random hole? Ryan, digging holes?
Hebrews chapter 6. There are...